And now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Trash Tuesday. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Trash Tuesday listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash Trash Tuesday. I am so pleased to announce that our show is sponsored by Liquid Death. Listen to this. Oh, yeah. Is there a better sound? You guys can get free shipping on all water and merch at liquiddeath.com slash trash. That's liquiddeath.com slash trash or find Liquid Death at 7-Eleven, Target, Albertson, Safeway, or Amazon. Um, I have been having such a fun time on the road. I love meeting all of you guys. It's like insane. So much crazy things. So many crazy things happening during the shows. It's incredible. You can see me August 12th through 13th in Springfield, Missouri at the Blue Room Comedy Club. It's gonna be amazing, I love that club. You can then see me in September, I'll be in Pittsburgh, Tempe, Arizona, La Jolla Comedy Store. I'll be at the Caluso Casino in California, you guys. That is gonna be so fun. Party with Meta Casino, please God, that is so fun. Then uh, later dates, I'll be in Kansas City, Irvine, San Jose, Michigan, and Florida. And you can go to annieletterman.com slash shows to get it. Also, please tune in to my Spotify live show every Monday at 5 p.m. PST, 8 p.m. Eastern. It's so fun. It's an interactive audio show where it's called Don't Bore Me with Annie Letterman. It's your chance to entertain me. It's been so fun. And I can't wait to talk to you on there. Hi, you guys. I am coming back on the road and you can get tickets at estheronice.com. I'm coming to D.C., Austin, Phoenix, Seattle, and Portland. I'm very excited for these shows. They're going to be really special. And... See you guys there. That's not a tattoo. That's. Imagine this was a tattoo. Be like an <laughs> intervention, like Annie. Anyway. The lip liner. Yeah. Honestly, if you're gonna put it on, you may as well just tattoo it on. May as well. It feels in. like a tattoo. Exactly. I feel like I, it feels like my like I killed someone in juvie or something. It looks like my teardrop tattoo. That's a green flag for me when a guy has a teardrop tattoo. Oh, interesting. I've yeah. never heard it, it put that you way. Your, oh, it's your a family. A green green flag. Flag. Lila has some murders in her family. Oh. <laughs> Are you familiar with the term green flag, like the opposite no. of a red flag? Okay. I understand. <laughs> I mean, Esther, yeah, I honestly thought there was another explanation for it and that you weren't. That's good. This is Esther explaining. That's when it's something everyone already knows. It's and Esther very just simple it. and I get to feel smart. I still learned seconds. it on TikTok, so. A teardrop yeah. tattoo is a green flag. Yeah. What didn't you say, Anthony? That I understand. No. <laughs> that when you see someone with a teardrop tattoo, that that is someone you actually want to engage with rather, rather than run away from. No. Uh, if I saw a teardrop, any face tattoo, it's got to be, that's a choice. But I don't know <laughs> if I would. I'm not, I'm not like, oh, I'm attracted to that person because of the face tattoo. Got well, there's that. one specific face tattoo that means a lot, which is the teardrop. So that means you've yeah. murdered someone. It okay. does? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Esther. Esther's first day in school, guys. I don't think it always means you murdered someone. It I could think be it, like you're mourning. I've heard people get it when like so, someone close to them dies. <laughs> really? That's so confusing. Carlos, mm -hmm. pull it up. When I'm not a murderer. I'm just sad. <laughs> Oh. As much as I don't want to reveal about myself that I'm actually white trash or half white trash, my grandma has eyeliner tattooed onto her eyes. That's not the same. That's not white trash. That's oh. also very Asian. Yeah, all Asian women have tattooed eyebrows, Finally. like older Asian no, women. No, eyeliner. Did I and say eyeliner. eyebrows? Sorry. And eyeliner. I That's okay. just like a time saver. It's not even really a tattoo. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I yeah. know Esther's like I don't want to brag. My family's so hardcore. We're like I <laughs> don't want to waste fancy time girls. Makeup on. But I am like, what does that say about my genetics that my grandma tattooed eyeliner? Like, are we like hoes or something? <laughs> I think just lazy. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I would love for you to tattoo some fucking eyeliner on. Come in with something. Come in with something. I'll pay for it. Honestly, I'll pay for your whole. I want you to get um. <gasps> Tattoo contour. <laughs> oh, that, oh, that S would. Esther, do you want to introduce our guest? So today we have Anthony Jeselnik. Welcome to our show. Thank you for having me. Um, big fans of the Jeselnik Rosenthal Vanity Project. The Jeselnik and Rosenthal Vanity Project, JRVP. You sound like a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> I really am. Carlos and I listen to it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Carlos got me into it because he's secretly a super fan. Yeah. I give her updates. <laughs> 
Cool. Um, on the way to San Diego yesterday, oh. um, Bobby and I, I was getting ketamine-assisted psychotherapy for the very Suicide. first time. <laughs> um, <laughs> but give her enough. We he we listened to you on the whole way over there. Oh, cool. Yeah. And then not so on the way were... back after the ketamine, she was like, I can't handle this. <laughs> it's too much. Well, it was you and then Brian Eno and then ketamine. So... Oh, how do you feel, Kalila? You're still attracted to murders, so I'm, it hasn't changed you that much. I'm still buffering. I, I, I'm, I don't even drink coffee, and I did ketamine yesterday, and I wasn't. I was slammed into a K hole. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but <sighs> I, um, boy, do I! It what? was. It was. I don't want to call it bad or good, but I was fucking frightened. <laughs> I thought I was dying. So I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm so excited. <laughs> but is it is it helpful? Like ketamine's one of those drugs I don't even understand what it is or what so it does. Ketamine is a dissociative drug. So when it enters your system, you're kind of detached. Like it almost feels like it's an out of body experience. You feel you don't feel any pain. I wouldn't call it a full like hallucinogenic because it's not like when people like see things when they're on mushrooms and they're euphoric. It's more like a for me it was going it was when they say k-hole i was in the hole i was seeing cave after cave after mossy cave and i was i thought i was dying and was she asking you like and then the doctor touched you here i couldn't speak i didn't was she have, asking you things though no i could i didn't even have a single linear thought i just had so much feelings and i was crying and i was clutching her for 90 minutes you were clutching her <laughs> so it's like, I'm so gonna get into are you lying on a table? Or yeah, you... it's like a moon pod. You put your um, your little eye mask on, and then the music. And I started off with high hopes, just like this. And very soon, I was in a fetal position, like clutching the therapist. But there's an, a doctor there as well um, for the whole 90 minutes. He was an ER doctor, so I felt like, oh, this is a safe experience. But even then, I thought I was dying. Whoa, was it fun? W yeah. <laughs> Does it sound fun? <laughs> like Listen, when it's over, do you feel better? Is it like almost like doing mushrooms? Where like take a, when second. it's done, you feel kind of like a weight is taken off you. It feels I I don't know yet. Like okay. I'm still buffering. Um, but the reason that I chose ketamine is because of its anti-anxiety and antidepressive properties. And they say like it those can last up to a whole year. Wait, you guys, that's so interesting. Like, are you, you're not. I feel on like you're not on antidepressants? antidepressants. No, you do seem like a candidate. Is that okay to say? It's because you do stand sure. up. That's <laughs> the darkness you unleash. Yeah, people always think that that's like a sign of something. I've, I've people flat out ask if I'm a psychopath, but <laughs> no. You have a good kind of like dead face too. Poker face, yeah, yeah. resting bitch face. <laughs> are you good at Are you good at poker? No, I get bored. So I just go all in really quickly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Like that. That's what I would do too. Yeah. <laughs> Let's either end this or me get out of here. Oh my God. Wait, um, have you ever done a, like a psychedelic or anything like that? Yeah, I've done uh, mushrooms. I did acid a couple of times. I was at the Martha's Vineyard for a summer and someone got acid. We trusted it. And like every couple of days we would do like a hit or two and like run around, jump off bridges and shit. It was what? fun. But at the end I was like, I don't know if I would trust it again, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, the mushrooms. bridge would probably be the part I wouldn't trust. Yeah, it, 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 a lot of people were doing that who, who even weren't on drugs. And yeah. It was really fun uh, in the middle of the night. But I every couple of years, <laughs> I, I'll do, <laughs> every couple of years I'll do mushrooms. So, someone described it as cleaning your windshield. Yeah, that's why I wonder, like, if, if ketamine's like that, that it's like you feel like you're just you got your car washed. And you kind of have a burden lifted off of you that mushrooms can be like that. But it's been years since I've done this. Sometimes yeah. mushrooms don't do that for me, though. It's like so I either do too much or too little sometimes where it's like. I just get uncomfortable or I'm like, you kind of like start thinking about the fact that everyone around you is going to die and you're going to die and stuff. And then you don't really like go into it. And then you're just stuck with the creepy feeling of it. Has anyone watched that show on Netflix that just came out with Michael Pollan, How to Change Your Mind? Yeah, I've been watching it. Uh, with the mescaline, psilocybin, all of that. Yeah, LSD. I, I, it's just gotten me very curious about like these kinds of experiences because they talk about how like, like what you're saying, like it just frees up your brain and opens you up and like clears you out. Well, if you think about like anxiety, right? Think of how much of your time before you were on meds and stuff was just like spinning, spinning, spinning. When there's like, what else could you be doing if you weren't and worried about like whatever? F for me, the ketamine was now in retrospect, the correct 
drug of choice because it made me realize that like I have no sense of retreat or surrender. I tried to fight out of this experience the whole time. There was no minute of like relax and let go. And that mm. says a lot about who I am. There is absolutely no surrender in who I am. And on top of that, I've never felt a single minute of safety in my life. So like those are the two downloads well, I've had since yesterday. Well, those seem to go together. <laughs> so it hasn't been an easy thing. Like I, oh, I was, God. everyone was like, "You're gonna love it." I <laughs> came out of there like, "What the fuck were they talking?" But don't about? you think you went in with an expectation, and that's what you're worried about instead of just because it's still working on you. You know, it's still working on you. You look younger. The, too. the expectation was, <laughs> "I'm gonna need healing around this breakup and self love." No, it did not go there. It, they were like, "You're gonna get shot up into space." It shot me straight down to hell. <laughs> That's what it did. It's so funny to me that you would want me on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that you like stepped out of academy and you were like, I hope Anthony's here. <laughs> I the feel first like you're thing the I want to see when I get out of my pod. Presence, yeah. You know, but when we talked outside, like it, yes, it, it does. I, I really, really am happy you're here today. Good. Yeah, I think you're the correct person to be in front of me after being in a K hole that long. <laughs> right. Was when you got out of the pod, was it like, like Bobby and Jules were just right there? They came, you know, when I got out of the pod, the first thing they handed me was a banana and I was happy. Oh, like, thank you. Thank you for this banana break. But I had a question for you. What do people do in Martha's Vineyard <laughs> I mean, besides it, acid? And well, there, are like, there were like two classes of people. It's like people who are there to work, which I was one of I, people who work in the restaurant service industry mm -hmm. and then people who are there on vacation or and then there's people who live there, which is like a different kind of class of people. But I was 20 years old, so I couldn't go to bars. So I was kind of just stuck doing, you know, what the people who weren't going to bars were doing, mm. which was a lot of weed and just hanging out, barbecuing. And if someone got acid, great. But it was just a really fun kind of hippie-ish uh, time. Were you a good waiter? I was, I worked in the kitchen. My friends oh, were waiters and they made so much more money. Yeah. But I just got to hang out in the, I worked on the cold line at the seafood shanty. Oh, love seafood sandwiches. shanty, love mm -hmm. seafood shanty. Yeah, it was, it was a really fun, a really fun summer. Yeah. I can't believe you're just like, yeah, I did like acid and jumped off bridges. I'm like, I don't know what to say to someone who tells, like, that's so scary. It, I mean, it, was an, it wasn't a very together. high bridge. It was like, you just like, jumped right into the water and then swam to the shore and did it again. But there were like kids doing it, you know, 20 feet away from us. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Does that change your... I, I still wouldn't have done it, but I'm just like, wow. If a kid taller than you came and did it, would you be... And that that would not change. It wouldn't change no, anything. my niece is taller than me. I see her. But do you things. think? Remember yesterday when you were like, I realized that it feels, or last week, sorry, uh, <laughs> that it feels good to do something that you were scared of. Totally. Do you think maybe bridge jumping's in your future? No, it's too far. What's what the about most? Acid? Oh, so go ahead. <laughs> I was would... gonna say, what about acid in your future? Is acid and LSD the same thing? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. it is. Based on like the science that they talk about in that show, like maybe I would. I liked acid more than mushrooms. Mushrooms kind of make you sick. Like it is a poison, a natural poison. Whereas acid, you kind of get the trip, but you don't feel that like that nauseousness that you feel on mushrooms. Did you have like the thing that they were talking about in this documentary where like everything is like melting and like, did you have that psychedelic experience? A little bit, but it was more, I didn't take that much. So it was more just like you have had this burst of energy and things were fun, but faces would get weird. Uh, you would stare <laughs> at the ocean for a long time. I remember at the, I, I took, uh, my first time I ever took it, I took a hit of acid. I got off work early, earlier than my other friends. It was me and this other guy took a hit of acid, ha we're having fun. And then when my friends got off work at night, I took another one thinking it was like beer. Like I'll, I'll have mm. another one and I'll keep going, mm. but I had a different trip than everyone else. And so I was kind of like really tired and just a little out of it. And my other friends were just like laughing and having fun. And I'm like waiting for this trip to end. And we go to this diner, the uh, the Black Dog Diner, I think it was called. It's like yeah. the famous, they, people use sweatshirts all the time. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. And I'm like, I think I'm finally done tripping. I'm sitting in a booth with my two friends. And this woman behind me, this old woman sitting by herself. I just kind of, out of the corner of my eye, I see her. And she goes to take a bite of a bagel. And it looked like her jaw unhinged. Oh. And, I just went, <laughs> and I was like so freaked out. I was like, nope, still, still tripping. <laughs> Looking Still at going. old people when you're tripping is really hard. Mm -hmm. I remember my, we, some girl, when I used to live in Santa Fe, some girl gave me like a pill bottle filled with mushroom shake. Like it was just like little pieces of it. So I don't know why I thought if it's chopped up, it's not going to be anything. <laughs> oh my God. So my friends and I are at, my friend and her mom were going to meet us and it was me and my two friends and 
we sprinkled it over our pizza at this bar. <laughs> and oh I mean, God. the whole thing, we're just like, whatever, and we're eating the pizza. My friend shows up with her mom and we lost our fucking minds. Like her mom sat down, her mom was like an older mom. She had already had wrinkles and my friend just went, your face is made of ropes. And it was like, we gotta go, we gotta get the fuck out of here. I feel like I was always like the person, I was always trying to, like if the cop showed up to a party, I was always the one like trying to manage it. Yeah. Trying to make the parents think everything was fine. I'm just curious, like do you, cause the way that they make LSD sound on this show is that like it opens your mind. You like, are you're such never a dork. Same. What do you mean? That you just watched this. This is the first time you're learning about it. You're calling it LSD. Everything you're doing is so. <laughs> is, it, is she right? Esther's, Esther's <laughs> graduated fifth grade, guys. <laughs> yeah. We should have like a sixth it. grade dance for you. <laughs> 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 she just started smoking weed this year. We're proud of her. It is I good. I'm happy for you. I would love a sixth grade dance at the comedy store. <laughs> yes. I would love that. <laughs> Who, no one would dance with me. It's just me. you and Benji. <laughs> <laughs> I made Carlos dance with me, but he has to like go away from a girl he likes. <laughs> now, Anthony, how were you at, at school dances? Would you dance or would you kind of be in the corner? Jumping? I was like everybody else where it was like guys on one side, girls on the other. And then the last song, the last slow song yeah. would play and everyone would dance. And then you'd be like, oh, it's over? And it's yeah. like you've had hours to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'd go home. Yeah, everyone. I Why does that happen? Fuck. Because well, you you're, you're building up, you're finally getting there. I think it's like you warm up, you see everyone doing it, and by the time you actually like, you know, get the courage to get out there, it's done. It's I over. know it, and it's like you're nerve. you're at the most like, insecure time of your life when you're afraid of people looking at you. And this is the one dance where everyone is fucking looking at you. Like if no one's dancing yet, it's like, they're Did you stunned. guys have this? I've heard this is a common experience about senior year of high school that like at the very last few weeks of it, you start to like get to know the, your classmates yes. better than you ever would. have. Yeah, I did that. Mm -hmm. Like I remember the last few weeks of high school, like having real conversations with people who I never really. Well, is that is that because everyone's signing each other's yearbooks and like you're passing that around? No, I think it's you're like, oh, I'm never really gonna see this person again. I might as well be like, hey. Like you took them for granted. All right, it's like, just like two people that never, we were in the same class, but we never like made the effort. I don't know, no one. Where did you no, go to I, high school? What was that like for you? I went to a public school uh, in a suburb of Pittsburgh called Upper St. Clair. And it was like a graduating class of 300. Uh, and I, I went to that school from like first grade through through high school. Oh, so fun. you've known people. So first grade through high school, so that's a K to 12. So you know kids from when, from kindergarten that went through the whole thing? First grade, yeah. Yeah. I had that too. Oh, wow. Well, What's that like? like? You, Ask him. <laughs> it didn't seem weird. You just, you were used to it that the other way would have been weird. And people would yeah. like, the Catholic school would come into our school for high school. Yeah. Um, but it was... It was normal. And I don't you get to have a lot all the anal. Hmm? Get to bang him on the butt. It is like I always think about that with like the comedian Lisa Traeger who does stand up. But like I'm, I do think like we were on the same school bus. That's so weird. Together, like to an elementary school. Wait, you were? Yeah. But I feel like you sat up front to talk to the driver to make sure everything was safe. Well, I was she always she was like no, smoking weed in the back. I do always I did always feel like the driver wanted to fuck me. I know that's so weird to say, and I was like oh ten. It's the least weird thing you've ever said. <laughs> 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 he definitely did. But um yeah, no, like just it is it's a different experience when you you've known someone since they were trying to fuck you. A when little you were 10. kid. Yeah. I don't know. Do you still talk to the bus driver? We text. <laughs> She's like, finally, someone's trying to fuck me. <laughs> Can't let him go. Did you go to prom? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Went to prom. It was fun. <laughs> I was the uh, Students Against Drunk Driving class pres president. Oh, my year. God. Yeah. God. Yes. Yeah. Excuse me. What I, were you, why, why, how did that happen? Because I, I was like kind of panicked about getting into college because I, I fucked around all through high school and right. everyone's like, you're going to regret this when it comes time to apply to schools. So senior year, I was like, well, now I've got to like do it all. And the only club, like I tried to join all the clubs, but the only club that had its election senior, like at the beginning of the year, instead of like the end of the previous year was sad. And, uh, and so I had all my friends, my sisters were in high school with me and I had them bring all their friends to the meeting and everyone's going to vote for me. And there's three people running. And one guy gets up and he's like, I think I'd be a good president. And everyone's like, yeah, we don't even know who you are. And then a girl gets up and starts crying, talking about some one of our family members getting killed by a drunk driver. Oh she really God. wants to change oh, it. Shit. And then I stood up and I'm like, so I've, 
I've been good at gun drinking and driving before. It's like, you know, I so I know what it's like and I can help, <laughs> I think, that way. And everyone's in shock, but I won by a landslide <laughs> because I had stacked the audience. And okay. so my friends gave me a flask that said Upper St. Clair, That's sad so president. Good. I have that, a question. Uh, um, you're obviously a very handsome man. This pretty privilege. Oh my God, somebody's saying um, <laughs> This pretty privilege wow. apply. I, this pretty privilege apply there. Like, you know, pretty privilege with girls and stuff. Esther, don't look at me like this is a fucking term I just made up. <laughs> well, it just became, she just got pretty, so. I'm honestly like, just thinking that that was more like his origin story for how think? he became a comedian because it's like someone went up and had this like tragic story and then you were like, eh. Fuck it, and drinking And that feels school. like like the how your jokes are, right? Kind of, I mean, I'd already planned my speech for the sad president thing that I was like, I don't know how to ad lib this, you know, and I I was committed. Um, it was just a kind of a funny story at the time, but uh, um, so for prom, I had to be, uh, I had to be, I couldn't, I wasn't supposed to drink at prom. Everyone was kind of looking at me, and uh, and then after after prom, they had this thing called after prom. Mm -hmm. So instead of kids going off and getting wasted in a cabin somewhere, they had a thing that was at school where everyone, oh, Dave and Buster's, where all the students went, and if you were on student council, you had to go to it, or mm -hmm. you couldn't graduate. And my girlfriend was on student council. So I had to go and we drink, we put um, vodka in Gatorade bottles <laughs> and pounded it right before we went in. And we'd all been up for days because it's like the end of school. You're just having fun with your friends. And so I just went to sleep on a table. And the parents thought I was like passed out drunk, which I kind of was, but I was also very tired. And they picked <laughs> me up and carried me around and made me walk in a circle for hours of after prom. Like I'm just like stumped. I don't barely remember. <laughs> and he never let anyone have so control wasted. over him again. <laughs> I, was, I, was not, I, was, I was angry about that. <laughs> And now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. You guys, life can be overwhelming and many people are burned out with that. They don't even know it. I know it. <laughs> I'm very aware of how burnt out I am. <laughs> Symptoms can include lack of motivation, feeling helpless or trapped, detachment fatigue, and more. I know I have felt all of these things and when you don't know what's going on in your head and you're just so overwhelmed it's hard to it's hard to get out of your loop or your cycle mm -hmm. and sometimes you need like someone else to look at your life and listen to you and in order to like snap out of whatever you're dealing with for me therapy has been an ind indispensable part of my life because um i had someone help me name it so I could claim it and then change it. And <laughs> I awesome. honestly, like, it's as simple as that. That's your it's, win, 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 win. Yeah, it's as yeah. simple as someone, an unbiased ear being like, okay, mm -hmm. let me help you name that thing that you're feeling so you can claim it so you know you're not afraid of this yes. thing that you're feeling. And then, you know, change it if it needs mm. to be changed. Like and you know, we associate poem. burnout with work, but that's not the only cause. Any of our roles in life can lead us to feel burned out and BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself. Yeah. Talking with someone can help you figure out what's causing stress in your life. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. And it's much more affordable than in-person therapy. And you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours from right now. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Trash Tuesday listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash trash Tuesday. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash trash Tuesday. As president of Students Against Drunk Driving, like what do you organize? Like what do you what do you do? They, I mean, I wasn't there very long. Like, I didn't go to a lot of meetings. Um, <laughs> and uh, they they wanted to do lock-ins, so they called it, where you would go to the high school and they'd have bands play, like high school bands would play, and kids would come. So it was like, keep kids off the streets and oh, off, I see. I away see. from drinking really, and just hang out. But that, I don't know if we ever did it. I was mm. really traumatized at our lock-in. Have I ever told what you What is a lock-in? So oh, my just... God. Can I just, wait. <laughs> Esther, all she wants is sleepovers. Like, she's so full of shit. She wants people to invite her to things that she can say no to is what it is. Because no, let me no, know, no. you finally got your school sleepover. What happened? No, it's so bad. Okay. I, 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 why did I? Oh, God. Just be yourself. <laughs> okay. So basically what happened was is, have I ever told you guys about the sex tape I made in high school? Right. Yes. Okay. So. Well, maybe you bus, haven't told him. It was with the bus driver, Anthony, if you want to <laughs> He wishes. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, bus driver. Okay, so just like bringing the up bus the driver speed. that got away, that drove away, <laughs> the one that drove away. <laughs> <laughs> 
So my freshman year of high school, before school started, there was like a, a football game and I was on Viquettes, you know, Palms. And so only freshman year. Um, and I went to the football what game. What is the Viquettes? They I was on Vicodin. <laughs> we had different high school experiences. So I met these two girls at a football game and like we just met and one of us I don't really remember who said it but was like we should have a sleepover and like so we asked our parents and we got to go have a sleepover and then like that's like the night where like we made this like sex tape whatever I don't need to get into it's the details. with two girls with you made girls. a sex tape yeah this is the first one You're not the second surprised. one surprised that? Annie, remember there are multiple sex tapes. This oh, was that the first right. one. It's just so sad how hard you tried to be like <laughs> How hard hot. I tried to be hot. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't want it. But so anyways, sorry, I really didn't mean to do this. Okay, so anyways, sex tape happens. The next day happens to be the lock-in. I feel like you skipped a step. <laughs> <laughs> like, so we just sleep over, sex tape happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's going on? So the three of you, what? We have to say that for another time. I, I, it's child porn. No, no, porn. no, no, no. You guys are. This is. I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> That's his thing. That's why we invited him. But anyways, what happens is at the lock-in, I'm like, oh my god, like we just all did this, like we're fucking so close now. They didn't hang out with me at the lock-in, and it was really <gasps> traumatic. And were you pounding on the door? Let me out. <laughs> <laughs> Why did do you cry? Why do you think? What 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 move do you do you did you run it back in your head? Like what did I do wrong? What did I, I say? I think they had like more friends at the lock in that they were excited about. Like to them, like the sleepover sex tape night was just like another night. Another what happened in the sex tape? Esther, you were used. I was used. Thank you. I understand you Thank so much you. better now. Wait, Esther, no 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 no. What happened with the how did it start? Who, who fingered who is the question? Who, this I, isn't like, we didn't have <laughs> iPhones back in the day. It's like you had to get like a... No, yeah, there was a camcorder. She pulled out a camcorder. She did. I don't want to... And this is just getting too traumatic. <laughs> and Anthony, our coworker, is here at the comedy store. What are your thoughts? Uh, she's a bad storyteller. <laughs> <laughs> she left out like the only yeah. good part. It's and, like, you, and you introduced, you're like, did I ever tell you guys about the sex tape? Well... <laughs> I'm going to leave out the sex tape, but tell you the rest of it. <laughs> the rejection around it, because that's all that matters to her. It's true. She's in it for the beating afterwards. Yeah, for them. The Did you make your mom, me. mommy come pick you up? You were like, mommy, I made a sexy tape with them, and now they don't like me. Do you no. think maybe it was like they didn't like what they saw? <laughs> <laughs> Once they saw you naked, they were like, ew, not as good as I thought. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Ew. I want to go home. I did you have a big home. bush then too? Oh my God, Annie. But did you? <laughs> no, it wasn't that bad then. Do you know Bobby said he didn't get his first pube until he was 16? Until he was 50 years old. And then <laughs> it fell off, but then he, he felt very attached to it, it so didn't he fall saved off, it. It escaped. It was trying to get away from Bobby. So yeah. he saved it, and then I guess his mom accidentally vacuumed it, and he was really upset about it because that was the only, like, that was his only evidence of, like, you know, manhood finally, like, setting in. That was a story he he's told me. Well, he's he's gonna be, well, I'm going to tell you, he's going to be real upset when someone vacuums you up. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to be real upset. <laughs> You're about to get vacuumed up, girl. <laughs> I love that you guys had like high school. It's so fun. I was. It was recently brought to my attention because th th it's only building what's going on out there about us. It's only growing. Um, someone sent me a link to a clip. There's like these two guys that like make fun of stuff and they refer to me casually as the girl that does nothing <laughs> and I, I was like dave dave come in here you have to hear what they're calling me the girl who does nothing and he's like why are you happy about that because <laughs> finally people get your brand i know i was like this is years. so cute i love it <laughs> and did you want us to do like games or something i just thought there would be some sort of structure or a plan it You've never like... watched a full episode. The, that's no, why the no. clips are good. I don't watch any podcasts. I no, no I idea. honestly wouldn't expect it. I think it would be weird if we're like, oh. now, Anthony, you are a teeth grinder. Yes. You Did are. you ever hit up Mary Lou? I had, not yet. Not she'll yet. Be, she'll, she'll get I'm you. Do you grind in your sleep or just um, constantly? In my sleep. I, like, I can't relax and sleep unless my teeth are completely clenched. What? It's, it's sore. It's I get so Botox in my jaw every three months. I've got like these, uh, I've got two... Um, what do you call them? Mouth guards. Uh, mouth guards. Yeah. So they're like, I don't, they, I you can keep them forever because they like, they rub together. Mm -hmm. So I don't, uh, I don't bite down too yeah, hard. But I have one. If I went to sleep without them, 
I would wake up in pain. That's like, what happened. I fell asleep without mine last night. I smoked too much weed and I fell asleep without my mouth guarded and my jaw is so fucking sore today. I have a so question. Annoying. When you do, I did the Botox in the jaw because my TMJ got really bad last year. And I was like, oh, I'll just try this. But it completely changed the way I smiled. Like my, I had yeah. a limit to how my smile, yeah, it would, it would stop right here. And I couldn't smile fully, so I never got it again. But it it worked with the pain. I, well, I noticed the smile is the same for me, uh, but my jaw it changed the shape of my jaw because it's from grinding so much, these muscles got bigger. That's and the I Botox know. took them down. But yeah. since I have the beard, it wasn't that noticeable. I but my see. face looks thinner. But do you yeah. do you wish you still had the stronger jaw? No. No. You don't Wait. So the anymore. Botox actually works. It helps. It's like it doesn't. Nothing stops it. I was looking for that magic thing. Like I've gotten these crazy massages and all kinds of different stuff yeah. to try to take it away, but it just kind of mitigates it. You know, I, I work out almost every day just to stretch and try to take this like the tension out because it goes all the way through my body. Yeah. yeah, but it's like whatever the whatever your like subconscious is gnawing at is the thing. Do you, it's like I, something subconsciously that you're. I think it's you muscle memory. It. Like I, I used to do yeah. it when I was younger, but it would like I would go on and off. Do you remember when you started doing it? Was it like was there any event in your life that happened? Around, around I remember or? I would do it like in college. You know, people would say like, "Oh, you're in your sleep, you're you're grinding your teeth a little bit," but it didn't. I didn't feel it. And then uh, I got to the point after college that I got a mouth guard, and then I just stopped. I would it, the mouth guard would fall out in my sleep because yeah. I wasn't doing it. And then right before I did the Donald Trump roast, when I got, found out I was going to do that, I was like, "This is my big break." I started doing it a lot. And I thought, okay, well, I, let me get a mouth guard now. And then after it, it'll go away. And then after the Trump roast, when all the stress was gone, I kept doing it. Yeah. And I've done it every day since it's been like 13, 14 years now. You got that I do it every, every night. Trump mendinorial joint problem because <laughs> it's from Trump TMJ. Okay, guys. Funny. I got to know. No, <laughs> I think you, it, it's, it's like muscle memory okay. now. And like my teeth are so, I've ground them down so much that I, I'm tr I feel like I'm trying to fit them together, yeah. you know, to what my teeth used to be. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what'll happen, but it, it's like it's the pebble in my shoe. It sucks. Yeah, I know. I can't stand it. Yeah, you get like inside massages where mm -hmm. they like go in. They it put hurts the like hell. Yeah. yeah, I love that. I know, Someone but puts it's like, on some gloves and puts their fucking hands in my mouth. I'm like, where else do you like it when they put their hands? Butt in your butt. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys ever yeah. done salvia? No, I, I never did, but yeah, those no. videos of Salvia are the most disgusting yeah. things I've ever seen. Why? A friend sh had me do it. It's Ooh. like you take it, you hit it like it's weed, mm -hmm. and then you like go to another planet for like thirty seconds. It's but not you long. look like shit. You look like while you're shit. On Where like, you I, I like came out of shit. it, and I felt great. I was like, oh my god, this is like it was like cleaning your windshield. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, maybe I try it again. And then I watched the video of someone on it. And I was like, I'll never do this again. Wait, why? Well, what do you mean you look like shit? You're like drool. Like you look like pull it. Yeah, pull up the video. It's like it's dark. It's dark. You're gone. But I've done ayahuasca and everyone's always like worried about other people looking at you. You're not like, it's not, you're you're there, but you're not like seeing it. And then the the guides take a little ayahuasca too. So there's never like a sober person. Who's, like, it's like you look like how, shit. <laughs> how long does the trip last, you say? Like, it seems like it's it's one of those like where you feel like you're in a dream. Yeah. But it's, it's literally like 45, maybe a minute, oh, 45 seconds a minute. Yeah. But uh, I never did it again. You should try. You never did um, it again. How did you stop yourself from doing it again? I mean, it's it's not that pleasant. You don't feel like I need the, I need want to do this now. It's okay. more an experience than like a. It's not like getting high where you're just like I want to get high and watch a movie. It was like a. a it was kind of tough that I did it once. So a friend brought it over, and I remember coming out of the the trip. My friend just had a huge smile on her face, just like, and I was like, <laughs> oh, you just watched me be real weird. <laughs> Yeah, but maybe that's what you need to break is that self-consciousness. Maybe that's the thing that would release you. I like my self-consciousness. I feel like more people sh should be self-conscious. <laughs> yes, I Except, I agree. I agree with that, but also like Duncan Trussell posted the best meme once and it was like, you know, it was like, you know, like a spiritual being speaking to like an audience yeah. and, it, and it said, once I realized I was cringe, I was free of being cringe or something. Like there is something where it's like when you're so conscious of what's cringe. Yeah. You... I think that you could totally go too far with self-consciousness. There's no doubt about that. But I do think there's like a... Rain like it a, in a little. A good yeah. amount. I like that. I've never heard like a pro self-conscious take, but I'm yeah. actually like, yeah, that's not a bad thing. Yeah. Well, people are looking at us. I mean, we are people that people, we stand and people look at us, so it's not... Well, that so than other there's also that. That's true, but like, well, sometimes when Esther's on stage, people are people are not looking. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, "Where is she? <laughs> like, where's this 
<laughs> I hear someone. They see Brad Williams walk past you taller than you. <laughs> oh, Brad. How pissed would Brad be if they passed another little person? At the store? Can you imagine? It they would be a rivalry. Whatever. It would be fun. I would love it. And put yeah. him right, like, start giving them, like, the Brad spots and just put Brad a little later to see what happens. <laughs> just a little, like, two people later. Oh, that's what they did with Asians for so long. The scarcity mentality. That's yeah. why we, that's why Asian Bobby is who he is. It's because that's why he, he hated he Ken Jeong and that fan and all of these guys because of the scarcity mentality. It's like, there can only be one of us. Guess I got to fight you to the death, you know? So well, I guess up. they did that yeah. with like female comics a little bit. I never. Definitely. With well, I never looked the same as any of them. It never like felt the same. Like I, I had was a, like next to you. I had a female Asian comic open for me in Vancouver and she was great. And I was like, oh, like, what are you you're like? You're so funny. What are you going to do? And she's like, nothing. Like my career is over. Ali Wong blew up. And it's over for me. And I was like, that's what? a weird way to think about it. And she's like, no, it's it's, it's how it is. I got to find something else to do. Yeah, she's like, that's wrong. Crazy. That's, that's wrong. That's, that's, that's crazy. scarcity mentality that's actually like, winning. Is I mean, wait, this, I think mm. I might know her. Was and that's it at, was she, um, Does she have kids? No. No, this, uh, this girl actually wasn't. And you know what? This girl actually wasn't. She never seemed like she could. Like, I remember talking to her. And she's like, no, it's just fine. I just like to do these gigs here and there. I'm like, really? I can't imagine doing comedy like casually yeah Seems someone so could literally take my name and like get plastic surgery to look like me and like become way i would never stop like did you guys see the plastic surgery in the comedy community this week no Ooh. no uh this is hot goss. chris delia got a nose job shut up <laughs> shut up what he did? how is that possible <laughs> What are you talking about? Yeah. How do you know this? Is Todd it, told me. Was it to look like me? Is, did I manifest? I don't know if they can put that much more on his nose to make him. Wait, what? He got, like he said, it was deviated septum, but it's a little, it's still swollen. Why would why would you get married and then get a nose job? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, why do you think? Why do you think? Like. Deviated, it's his deviated septum. I would believe it's deviated septum because he's on a podcast. Like, I think if you got a nose job, you would uh, hide it. You would hide it a little better. Not in yeah. LA. I feel like everyone almost like sports that thing mm -hmm. around. Like, look, I, I yeah, I, LA is such a weird place. Like, everywhere I go, there's always someone with those bandages under their nose. But in comedy, I don't know. <laughs> like, do you remember giving like your first blowjobs and like you, you tried to like not make sound? I remember trying to be like, so self-conscious like may as well have been at a school dance because i was uh, i was my teacher no but like i just couldn't like i didn't want to make any sound i like wanted to be like really like chill about it it just ended up being like napkin. i was like and my fork <laughs> but just trying and then i like watched porn and i was like oh i went the opposite direction you're supposed to <laughs> pretend to choke <laughs> Have you ever puked on a dick, Esther? No, I haven't. But I'm not really a thrower upper in general. Throwing you're a up you're scares a me. Constipation girl. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, to, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I feel like a anal joke. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Just getting packed up there. This does have like a sleepover vibe to it that I feel like I'm like like peeking in a door. <laughs> 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 It's time to chat about liquid death. You know, why is it called liquid death? Because it's death to plastic, Esther. And 10% of the profits from every can sold are donated to help kill plastic pollution. You guys, water and aluminum cans is the future. It tastes delicious. And liquid death has three new flavors. <gasps> Esther has a severed lime. And he has the, what's it called? Mango. Mango. Chainsaw. chainsaw. Mango chainsaw. And I have the buried alive. I love the lime and so much. I don't drink. You don't drink, right? Do any of us drink? No. Hardly. I so hardly it's like drink. we get to look cool at parties. We look still like stay hydrated. We're drinking beer. Also, I make mocktails at home with this. I do a little cranberry juice. It's so good. And if you're UTI? anything like me, if you're anything like me and you're in a social situation, I'm, I'm like, I never know what to do with my hands. This is the perfect solution to I'm that. actually not kidding. When I first got sober, that was such a big thing for me because... You don't realize how much you're using a drink to get you through an awkward social, totally. like the sip of it. I remember accidentally grabbing Cape Cods before and like I had like drank alcohol accidentally because it's like you don't have the right thing to grab. Well, can I say the, the right thing, thing for me that may seem so basic and cheesy, but like it makes drinking water fun and then that makes me drink more water. 
and then that makes me prettier. Mm -hmm. Should I put myself in a fucking can so you do what I want? (laughs) (laughs) Guys, it makes you pretty to hydrate. So get on it. Liquid death, water and aluminum, death to plastic. Do it today. Get free shipping on all water and merch at liquiddeath.com slash trash. That's liquiddeath.com slash trash. Or you can find Liquid Death at 7-Eleven, Target, Albertson, Safeway, or Amazon. But liquiddeath.com slash trash. Marin gave me advice when I met him and he was like, I met him like the first week I was doing comedy at the comedy store and he was just like, get out of here, don't come here. He was like, go to UCB, he's like, get away from the comedy store. Oh my God, Mm -hmm. that's so funny, he got me passed. He was like, you want an audition? (laughs) (laughs) He told me to leave. Yeah, people hang out at the store too early. They hang out at clubs and Mm. it's like, you're not gonna, like you don't wanna be known as the person Mm -hmm. who hangs out. You wanna be the funny person that they can't wait to get in. Yeah. uh, That's not bad advice. So maybe you should go to UCB. No, he gave me good advice because at the time, the store was literally garbage and like so shitty and no one should have been there. And the UCB was like the coolest place to be. But I just was, had a darkness. And look at that now. Look at where it is now. It's nowhere, right? Isn't used to be completely closed? Yeah. I think they're opening it back up, but I don't know. It's not going to be the same. I forget who bought it. Well, you look at those people too, and those people are still doing well in acting and stuff like the sort of more UCB comics, I feel like. But a lot of people that I thought were going to be like the big comics are like no more. I I remember that was the first time I met you was at the Comedy Cellar. I met you doing your podcast. Do you remember the first time we met? I'm hoping you don't remember. <laughs> oh no! The first time I remember meeting you, I'm was really hoping. You last don't comic standing. <gasps> oh, with Norm. Oh, I don't yes. remember that. Were you and a judge? I, I know I was the host. Oh, the host. And it was like the first night, and I'm like, and I realize it's a mistake almost immediately that I've done this, and I'm pissed. <laughs> yeah. I'm in a bad I mood. I forgot you were the host. And they're like, "Well, you, we want you to go in and talk to the uh, the comics." You know, it was like there was like four nights oh, of like no. the preliminaries where it's like these people now go on and it becomes a competition. But they're like, come in and talk to a room full of people. And I'm already I'm mad I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm mad I got to do this. I've got like I'm trying to remember my lines in the script. And I'm like, I, I walk in and I have no plan to what I'm going to say to everyone. So I'm kind of just like, guys, don't shake my hand on stage. Like, I'm just like I'm just almost like yelling at people. <laughs> and I walk in angry, nervous. And Esther goes, and she's sitting on like in a chair on the floor next to me. And she goes, and I'm like, any questions? And Esther goes, Anthony, will you get me pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you used to be so funny. And I wanted to murder What happened to that, Esther? <laughs> what happened to the little rape joke, Esther? Why Remember did you, you want to kill me? Wait, that's so, oh my God, I can't believe I said <laughs> that. I was just mad that anyone would even talk to me. I, I was just, I was so <laughs> mad I was there. And anyone trying to joke around with me, I was pissed. <laughs> I don't remember saying that, so that's at least. At least but I, we can all see it. But one hundred percent, I'm sure. I, I when you say it, I'm like, of course I did that. Co- yeah. I remember. I will say this, like, because it's so easy to have to be cheesy in that role of being the host. And I do. You never were like cheesy or betrayed yourself. Like you were very like. You were cool. It was you. you. You were in character as yourself. Like you stayed true to yourself. So at least I have that to say. I remember I was. That was when I first met Miss Pat, and she was like, <laughs> she was like talking about how she wanted to beat the shit out of me. <laughs> 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 she was like, if you were my child, and telling me like how she wanted to hit me, and I was like, thank you, Miss Pat. Um, but do you remember the what happened with Norm Macdonald? How he was like really nasty to me. I mean, he was nasty to a lot of people. Okay. I mean, do you like Norm and I would fight? Like, oh, fight on camera. Really? And after every episode, we would meet up, and we he'd be like, "Well, it's going to be great television," because it was like they're like, "You guys need to talk this out," because he no. would be so mean, yeah. and the audience was like, "What?" And, be, and so I would come and come back at Norm, try to get the audience back, and then he was getting mad about me coming back at him. They, none mm. of the judges were used to thought the host was going to be mean to them. Yeah. And so I was like, I'm on the comic side. Yeah, I'm gonna be mean to you, and it was just—it was so uncomfortable the whole thing. Well, that, that was what—that was why I felt so tricked because the producers were like, "Hey, we're doing this differently. It's not like Simon Cowell vibes. Like, it's going. Everyone's a comic here. We're gonna be really. It's all positive, constructive. So everyone was going in like we're not expecting a fight. And then when Norm would like suddenly say rude shit, I reacted honestly in the moment. I was like. I'm not taking this. So yeah, that is my memory. But of you it guys too. fought a lot. Yeah. Did he lose that fight too? <laughs> um, 
Well, I, was, I, I took the job because I wanted to work with Norm. So they were like, Norm's oh, not God. happy with you. And I'm like, I'm not happy with him. I don't know what's going on here. It was so, he was so He's mean. He's a little bit like. But in a weird way. Wasn't he always like, you couldn't tell if he was doing a bit or not. That's how I always felt when I. I mean, the I bits didn't make sense. Though. It wasn't a bit. It was yeah. like he was pontificating about things. And female comics especially mm. got it got it rough. Yeah. And, uh, and it didn't make, he would love someone and hate someone else. It didn't yeah. make, there was no rhyme or reason that it was just awkward and weird. And he would go on for a long time. Yeah. But I felt like I had to kind of not roast him, but I had to kind of take control of the show. Yeah. Otherwise it was like the norm, the norm hour. And I think Roseanne and Keenan were like, what's he doing? Yeah. Like, what's norm talking about? Yeah, but I it was, remember. It was real weird. When Roseanne's going, is this guy crazy? You know, there's an issue. <laughs> <laughs> I remember he said something like, calling me like the biggest disappointment of his night and i was what? like that's so daddy too I it's know. like why are you like i can't disappoint you i know i think i said something like you're my dad's favorite comic or like i don't know it was just so awkward it was so weird and then afterwards i was freaking out oh i, I had to comfort like there were people crying afterwards and i'd be like don't let them see you cry like fuck the last comic standing like i'm the best comic in three a three mile radius <laughs> and i wouldn't make it three minutes on this show like That's why so was nice anyone upset? I, I was just I hated the process so much. I know so you are much. nice to comics. Yeah, well, for the most part. Yeah. Uh, there was one girl I remember. This girl got introduced by her father. Like I introduced Ew. everyone, but this one that like her dad's here. They were like an Indian family, and the dad came out and with like a heavy accent was like, "I'm so proud of my daughter." And she walks out in like a really nice dress, does three minutes, and then Norm says, "I go, Norm, what do you think?" And Norm goes, "What the hell's going on here? I was told I'd be here to judge the hundred funniest people in the country." I don't think you're one of the hundred funniest people in this room. Oh, and I, oh. <laughs> I lost it so hard. I thought it was the funniest thing I'd ever heard. Like, her dad's right there. He knows the it dad's It is there. so funny to be mean to someone in front of their parents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's he, actually nice. It's like, he, they'll fix this. He could be funny. And if it was funny, great. But there were a lot yeah. of times he wasn't being funny. It was just like, why are you being so mean to this like hack comic who yeah. you can just dismiss and be like mm. yeah not my thing you know well, he always said but he didn't like crazy. female comedians right didn't he say he didn't think women were funny yeah that is so fucking annoying <laughs> yeah he had so some annoying. uh he had some opinions that it's like what we're like, how upon. are we doing this yes it's banana break time are you a banana fan i mean sure <laughs> like i'm Do a you, fan um Well, are you um, are you a comment reader, or it just was there were so many comments that you can't? I mean, you can't ignore it when you're getting like inundated. I right? read them, I sk peruse them because they all become the same. Mm -hmm. All the negative ones are the same. All the positive right, ones yeah. are the same. But occasionally, there's one that's like my parents' address, and I'm like, oh, let, yeah. me, Gosh, let yeah, me take yeah, that yeah, one yeah, down. Yeah. But I, I see things. Yeah, you know? I, I'm aware of what's going on. But yeah, they all are. They're all the same. Yeah. Speaking of comments, there's I saw on Reddit. I'll occasionally glance this one. Ooh, that's a real cutting moment. This one really caught my eye, but there's someone on Reddit who is saying, who's comparing you to Tony Hinchcliffe. And I'm like, is there something, Tony. is there something there? Like They're calling me skinny. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm like, I don't know if you know this fact about me, but I dated Tony a long long time he ago. already said he regretted coming on the show <laughs> <laughs> you're giving him more reason <laughs> but i'm like is there something like are you is there something about me being drawn to you and tony that <laughs> i mean what how could i be like tony Hinchcliffe? in what way could i be like tony that i'm attracted to you <laughs> oh <laughs> i just start saying the c word <laughs> I, I love Asians. <laughs> when I first met you, I think I think Bobby and I must have been pacing around the house for a good like hour before just because he like builds these things in my head where he's like, you know, he's he's this way and he's that way and he's this way. And um, you couldn't have been more different than what he. <laughs> what did he say? You know, like Bobby has like a healthy fear of people with principle. Like and you are a person who is like principled like things like you know you you you're in comedy it's the wild wild west and there are few people who really sort of like know who they are and you're like you know what there is right from wrong it, i'm not going to play this fucking wild wild west game and he views you as that because he plays in the wild wild west so he kind of felt like oh god like um, i'm gonna get a talking to basically but he so did he got you you were that was you were the one that brought up the megan gailey the megan right? gailey stuff yeah he I, did I get a know, talking to i didn't know that what i was I, I brought her up and i forgot about that they right, had yeah. any kind of issue 
at all. Yeah, but, but that I, worked out because Megan came on our show and then Bobby bought her like a flat screen TV. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I mean, he spent $3,000 on all of these gifts to give her. Like every 10 minutes of that show, he was like, here's another gift. Because he was so embarrassed about how he conducted himself. And the reason that he even came to that reckoning was because you basically put him in his place. He was, and you're like, yeah, you, you were an asshole to her. What did he do to she, her again? He like kicked her out of the green room or something? He had, I think she, she He opened, did power moves? He was like, I don't like what you're wearing on stage. Oh, that's it's my so show. fucked up. And that's the most <laughs> fucked up thing to say. That's so yeah. fucked up. And I it's love her. It's actually so funny though. Why uh, would he do that? Because I've he's a fucking, like, they, yeah. I mean, she wasn't like a ball gown or something, right? Like it that was kind of a touch. I feel like, like I might have been But like, she's the MC. like who gives a shit? Like yeah, maybe yeah. To be annoyed, but to, to open yourself up to be like, this upsets me. <laughs> It's clear. He, I think he was upset about other things. And yeah. took, it, took it out on Maybe her. Maybe his set yeah. wasn't so good, and then he wanted to be like, "It must have been the dress." No, I think his, his set's always good, but I think before shows, he'll he thinks the worst. Yeah. yeah. Is there nothing that enrages you more than when people ask a question and then ten minutes after, when you don't answer the question right away, text you like twenty question marks? Oh, I I never will talk to them again. No, I appreciate no one does it. That to me. I, I kind of know what you mean, but no one. They wouldn't dare Dares. is why. Yeah, that's a block. <laughs> but you, um, you don't care if people don't like you. You've just never cared. I try to do things. And if I'm going to be mean, I try to do it in a very concise way that it's like, you kind of have to laugh and respect it. But I'm not, I've said some like really mean stuff, but it's like you, I've got to give you some rope. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a comic who just kept giving me advice. This is like a couple months ago. Just kept being like, oh, you should do this as a podcast. You should do this. And I'm like trying to be polite for as long as I can. Mm. And finally, I'm like, if I need any more career advice, I'll let you know. And the room laughed. And the guy was like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, you're, you're right. I'm sorry. And everyone was like, that was really funny. I'm like, I didn't, I wasn't trying to be mean, but he like didn't give me any choice. Yeah. Yeah. How, you have to shoot people down. Sometimes. How do you have like that confidence and self-worth and stuff to be like, yeah, if someone sent me those question marks, I'd block them. Like, where does that come from that you're like, you just do you know yourself so well or like, what is that? I, combination of things and maybe i just get away with it but if you're willing to accept the consequences and you don't let it bother you then you can kind of do anything yeah. i'm yeah. so afraid of blocking people like i'm just there's something about that i just have like this big hump with it like i'm so afraid that i don't know like like i'll miss an emergency or like i will have done something so bad it just but i want so badly to be that person that's just like, no, you're, you're out. Even if you block someone, if they need to get a hold of you, they can still find a way to get a hold of you. But see, I don't, I'll block on Twitter. I, I mute on Twitter because I don't want them to have the satisfaction of knowing they're blocked unless I want them to know. I think mm -hmm. Owen Benjamin years ago, I was like, I want you to know that I, that I like dislike you and uh, I'm blocking you. But on, on texts, I want to know what's coming. Yeah. If some crazy person is like blowing up my phone, I want to know if they're about to show up at the show. You know, that I wouldn't, I wouldn't block that, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't respond. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll leave okay. you on red. I, uh, yeah, say. leaving on red is the power move. Mm -hmm. Oof. I don't block, I've unfollowed a lot of people that I see a lot. That feels good. Mm -hmm. that, that is feels because like don't they just like evaporate from your consciousness yes. altogether? You know what's a fun move is uh, if someone's texting you right back, like, oh my God, I'm fucking dealing with so-and-so somebody we just were talking about and uh and they're so fucking annoying send it to them and then write back sorry that was for someone else yeah, 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 yeah. that's a, that's a brutal move wait about that's so so funny. if it was me you if would... you're texting me a bunch i'll just write back oh esther's being so fucking annoying right now and then write back oh sorry that was for someone else that'll fuck your whole week up all right that I, i'm in the vat mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, I feel like I sometimes, when people are, like there was this one girl that I unfollowed, she was bothering me, she wanted me to do an, a voice on her cartoon and she's like, not a thing. Like, I don't, someone drew her a cartoon. It's like nothing. I was mm. like, I don't want to be on your cartoon. So I just ignored her. And then um, she was complaining to my friend, like, oh, Annie's like not responding to me or whatever. So when I see her next time, I'm going to go, why do you think I'm not responding to you? And see if she can come up with it. Cause it's like, if you're, if you ask me, if you've contacted me three times in a row and it's f you asking me to do something for you, you've not offered me anything. There's no exchange. I will never talk to you again. Mm. See, I'm I, like, uh, Tiffany Haddish is so good at this. When I was doing a show with her and someone's like, Hey, Tiffany, can we get you doing a quick video? And she goes, I get paid a lot of money to make movies. 
and it's like it's just like a way, she's staying with a smile they're enjoying the the, the conversation there's mm-hmm. no like com- she's not like yeah, no it's a boundary i like to say of course i'm not going to do that yeah <laughs> like, like, oh that is good it yeah it gives you an out like no one's mad and it's so easy okay wait i yeah. love that so much that's like what i'm seeking in life i know this sounds weird but someone who when I ask them something that they'll say, of course, I'm not going to do that. Because it's so sec- it makes me feel so secure that you're never going to do something that you don't want to do for mm-hmm. me. If you're I like, love mm, maybe, yeah. you know, let me think about it. Like, don't do that. Just say, of course, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> it's great. I think that's the freedom. When I look at you, there's a freedom that I don't need to speculate about where we stand. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's I had so someone ask me, they're like, do, do you hate me? And I'm like, do you know people I hate? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, do they have to ask me if I hate them? And they're like, <laughs> You're right. I'll let you know. I'm so inspired. I want to be like this. I just like it so much. I don't know. I feel like it's there's something in me that can, it's it's in okay. there. I can right. learn so much from you because I've just been a chronic people pleaser my whole life and super cool. Yeah. And I, um, I have a problem telling people or just rocking the boat in general. So I feel like you are the perfect person after a ketamine yeah. hole. You have to just own it and not regret it. And if so that way you get a reputation where someone's like, oh, he was such a fucking dick. Like, that's just Anthony. You know, yeah. like, don't. He just roasts people. It's, it's fine. Well, yeah. No one can get that mad. It's, I'm glad you're saying that because it is reminding me of what we learned about you and how you are a people pleaser and it's hard for you to say no. And like, I would love, I would literally get off on hearing you say to me, of course I'm not doing that. I would right. love for you to say that to me. In, in my ketamine journey yesterday, do you know what I found out I was asking? This is how codependent I was. In my own fucking, as I'm seeing mossy cave after mossy cave, Apparently, I was repeating this. Is everyone okay? Are you okay? I was saying the therapist's name. Are you okay? I'm worried about. I'm worried about you. Hey, is everyone okay? I'm like, the fuck. That's some like deep rooted shit. But that's exactly what needs to be happening because you have to get through that. You have to keep doing that until you stop doing it. Yeah, that's the truth. I want to get to the point where I'm like, I don't care who's okay and who's not okay. How about I'm okay in this moment? Why don't we do a challenge? I want that. For why you. don't we do a challenge? Maybe a blocking challenge a or blocking a, like challenge. Uh, respond a right away with an honest opinion for a week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> challenge. But see, the other side of that is that is, is I'm I can be very cutting, and my truth, the way I feel inside, is oftentimes not what people can handle, and people see me as this like very complacent placating type of person but if you're asking for that it can get ugly real fast <laughs> because my feelings the deep burning feelings in my chest aren't pretty oh no so she's, it's she's like, just gonna be like esther you're ugly <laughs> esther, you're when way she was too saying, ugly for me when she was saying that she was like in the pod and she's like you know what i was thinking were you like was it about me were you hoping she was gonna say like i, I thought about you i w- <laughs> But I, yes, you I are goals. So, you are my goals. I when I, I'm going to put you in my vision board as somebody who has very firm boundaries and just who just is principled and is, you know, very, um, we can rely on you for the truth. So mm-hmm. I, I want to be that person. Of course, for other I'm not doing that. Of course, I'm not going to do that. Awesome. Well, my new favorite is uh, the guy at the comedy store, the photographer at the comedy store will be like, hey, can I get you to do some poses in the bathroom? And I go, I don't have time for your bullshit tonight. <laughs> <laughs> And he, he laughs. He's like, all right, cool. Got it. And it's like, there's no, it's not awkward. It's just like. There's no guessing What's up, game? Van? Yeah. Van's a, sl- uh, is a slug. He watches. What's up, Van? Uh, Van um, is doing great. But if he puts one of those fucking dots on my picture, I will block my, he- I will black my name off the wall. What's the I will dot? Bring, what do you mean? He, he, every once in a while, he hasn't done it in a while, but every once in a while he'll put like, add like these dots onto the pictures and it's i'm unex i find it unacceptable they're like little bubbles like white yeah. i didn't notice them for the longest time and someone pointed them out i it, saw it on tony baker i'm like leave tony baker alone all right it's He's not van who asked me to pose but it's the other guy the guy with the beard oh matt yeah matt yeah. matt do you watch yeah they're both good though the comedy yeah. store photographers are good uh, my favorite though and a shout out to your girlfriend liz who's seriously liz freaking is so amazing good. thank you amazing we got to get her to the comedy store can we get i her know there? i'm trying really i'll, trying. I'll yeah. have to yeah I want her there. It's, kind of, it's, it's the thing now where they're like, they're like, yeah, we want you. And then no one ends up getting in touch. And she's right. like, what's going on? They're like, oh, they haven't gotten in touch yet? We'll talk to someone. But like the Shore brother or whatever was like, was like, yeah, let's get her yeah. number and get her in here. So hopefully something works out. Yeah, because she's at the Laugh Factory mostly. And then at Largo. She left the Laugh Factory. Oh, she'd she be did? improv now. Yes. Yeah. Oh, she is? Mm-hmm. 
I've heard that your dog has more followers on Instagram than you. Is that true? Mm-hmm. I just started an Instagram like like a month ago, and I've got two posts, and I'm about to hand it over to a social media guy that I just kind of did it to. That's like the future is Instagram and TikTok, and I've always avoided that stuff. But I, I started the the accounts, but I, I made one for my dog when I got him a couple years ago, and uh, he's got like almost ten thousand followers. <laughs> oh. but that's like my passion. Like I love the dog Instagram. I hate, and I've learned that. If I'm in the picture with the dog, it gets way more likes um, that I, uh, I've i been doing more of those. But Does that make you feel good when you're like, you need me, dog? I think that mm-hmm. should be your main Instagram account then. Like That's... it should just be like you sometimes use your dog's account to promote stuff. I thought about that. If I was not if I was just using it for like fun, I would do that. But yeah. if I'm going to sell tickets, oh, well, yeah, I might yeah. as well have it under my name. Yeah. You should but just again, bring I'm, the dog with do you. Go full female comic. He's too big. Bring. Oh, he's a big one. Oh, yeah. So cute. Wait. I like the name of your Largo show. It's funny. What Jessel is Nick it? and Enemies? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is funny though. Everyone's like, is Jessel Nick, does he hate me? Is he thinking, talking shit on me? And you're just like posting pictures of your dog. <laughs> oh. Do you have other tips for like, I'm trying to have a, self, dogs? a self-worth mm-hmm. summer, like how to build your self-worth so that you say no to people and like have boundaries? I just, when I really hate something, I think like, why did I say yes to this? And now I've learned, like I just got offered to do a New Year's Eve gig that sounded like, something sounded great, some things didn't. And I was like, you know what? I guarantee come New Year's Eve, I'm gonna be like, why did I do this? I don't wanna be getting on this plane right now. And so I just said no well in advance that just when you don't like something, think like, should I, what, why didn't I say no? And yeah. then you just start saying no to things. Yeah. Like I turned down most podcast appearances. I was interested to see what this would be like. <laughs> um, would you come back? Yeah. Hmm? Would you come back? You. Sure. <laughs> it's not that far away. Like, I like you guys. I, I thought this was uh, interesting. I feel like I, this isn't a healthy feeling, but I feel like you're one of my papas of comedy because you talked to me when I was an open micer. So I seek your approval. But I, I mean, you scheduled an appointment. It. it wasn't like you just walked up. What's that? You scheduled an appointment. No, I know. And you, like and you like followed through and you showed up. And... I. It sounds like I sexually harassed you at work. <laughs> 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 so thank you for forgiving me. <laughs> I remember I left uh, that night and I was talking to a friend of mine. And I was like, do you know Esther Pavitsky? She said, and they go, before you say anything, she's a friend of mine. And I was like, oh, I'm not like, That's I'm not so... saying anything bad. Like, Who I, was it? I forget. I forget. Esther wow. needs to know this who this so friend is. No, it's uh, that's nice. Yeah. I'm yeah, proud cool. of you for that moment, though. That is a very, like, strong Esther move. To ask him to get me pregnant? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah it's very on brand. It's very on brand. Well, you're tall. Like, you have, like, the right <laughs> opposing things for my genetics that would... It's I like how you're justifying this. Like, you were seriously yeah. trying to get him to pregnant. <laughs> like, it wasn't like, a Like, you weren't joke. just making a joke. Like, oh, you were I, like... No, I my dad. I talked to my dad about it. And you, he's here. He's gonna introduce me. I don't make jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I just say things that sometimes are funny. I do feel like I met you. Like you, when I first met you, you were like already kind of blowing up. You had already had your MTV um, unpicked up pilot. Your unpicked yeah. up pilot, but that was a big deal for the level that all of us were at at that point. And um, but and then you started. You were like, I think just getting into acting and stuff. So you were being, like, I think, more, like, behaved. You weren't as, like, tits out. You were you were on the end of your tits out phase. I don't know. I think I've always been, like, silly and stuff. But I definitely had periods of time in this career or whatever, like, my adulthood, where I've been more shy and not fully myself. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that is something that, like, discovering weed has been helpful with. That I think that's why I'm so curious about, like, all the other kinds of psychedelic stuff because yeah i feel like a part of me got lost in whatever it is like the pressures of work mm-hmm. and stuff but i think that's what happens to everyone like you get older yeah. and you like the world tells you to shut up or this and that and then you like dim yourself or whatever well also you just naturally like settle into yourself and maybe the things that were like activating you before aren't i watch a lot of reality tv and I've watched the MTV's challenge for oh, since yeah. it started. We got Theo has to talk about it. Why does he never talk about it? Have you ever he tried was, to talk to him? He about was on Road Rules. He was on he Road Rules. Like, and- doesn't like talking about it. Doesn't like being brought up. I get the Road Rules part of it because he wants to be yeah. known as a comedian. But right. the, the challenge, he was only, I, I didn't even watch the season. Yeah. Uh, but I got into it during the pandemic and was like so all about good. it. Yeah. I haven't watched the new, the last season or two. Well, 
I watched Wait, the first two seasons of All Stars. I'm very happy to know you like it. It's it's good, but the thing is with All Stars is what I was gonna say is, so they have it's been going on for twenty some years, mm-hmm. and so all of the people and the challenges all of the people from the real world and the world was are used to be, and now it's different reality shows too, come and they do all these like really insane hard, uh, physical competitions, and they like, get voted off and stuff, but. Now they're older, so no one's really like fucking each other. No one's really like not drinking. No one's really mm. getting wasted or fighting. So it's a, definitely a different thing. And then now they're trying to sort of reinvent it with, with younger people. And they had to make the challenges easier <laughs> because mm-hmm. no one could compete could complete them. They're all like in their fifties now. What other like reality 40s. shows are you into? I mean, I watched during the pandemic. I never watched anything, but mm-hmm. I got into the challenge big time when I was going back and watching seasons yeah. and like, oh my god, the storyline is great from yes. like three years ago. I watched um, Big Brother. I watched <gasps> a couple seasons of Big Brother. Watching the new season now. I haven't watched the new season. Me either. Uh, I don't know if I will. Uh, the, I watched The Bachelor last season, uh-huh. and uh, I've watched the first episode of The Bachelorette, but I truly hated it. Oh, was it I'll... this? Did it just start? Of yeah. The Bachelorette. Mm-hmm. I like Gabby um, though. Yeah, the, the new I really like her. Who was the last Bachelorette? Was Michelle? Uh, oh yeah, it was Michelle. Yeah, yeah, I feel like the last couple of seasons of the Bachelorette. Well, sometimes have been buds. it's just I don't know. It's just such an unbelievable show. It's like so like the people are also mm-hmm. like full of shit. Yeah. But um, yeah, I didn't watch this first episode. I don't know what what it's going to be like with the two girls. No one's into Love Do you Island. Ever watch- Love Island's fine. Oh, I lo- not the US, Survivor? the UK one. I watched the first season of Survivor ever. I just moved out to LA. I remember being really into it and then just didn't, well, they started the new season like right afterwards and I was like, I can't, I can't do this again. It's my favorite thing about it. They don't yeah. wait that long in between. It's my favorite show. I freak out when I've ran into Jeff Ropes and it's, <laughs> it's, you would think I, I'm, you know, meeting Oprah or something. I freak <laughs> out. He's my guy. <laughs> He's the man. Would you ever do a reality show like that? No. I just don't, I don't want to be on camera the whole time. I don't like, I don't want people to see me run. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. I, like I, I, uh, I enjoy watching them, but yeah, I don't feel the need yeah. to, to be a part of that. Um, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to Anthony for sitting here <laughs> and being polite. And um, you guys will see you next week with a whole new episode. With Anthony, we're going to have him back. He's coming every week. I'm not leaving. <laughs> he said it's close. But honestly, he's the only male comic who will agree to do our show after our shit went down. So thank you because no one wants to fucking talk to us anymore. You did not tell me that when you asked me to come. <laughs> <laughs>